Let's get this over with. One, two, three, four. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and to begin this presentation, we just wanted to discuss how physique plays a role in our romantic relationships, especially in those beginning phases of dating. We thought that the best example of this could be found in online dating, specifically with the use of apps. Dating apps are often used for convenience and ease as they require less time to set up than an actual dating profile on a website such as eHarmony or OkCupid. Additionally, most users are just looking for a self-validating conversation or a casual encounter, whereas websites are typically used by those looking for long-term relationships. While dating apps, or hookup apps as they're commonly known in today's culture, exist for select preferences, whether it be the LGBTQ community, people who are looking to travel, or only the rich and the famous, we chose to focus on the most popular of them all, Tinder. With Tinder, a user creates a quick profile with a few photos and a brief description of themselves. They then choose the age, range, and distance of what they would like their dating pool to be in, and the app will recommend other users showing a large photo of that candidate, their name and age below that picture, and then a brief biography and a much smaller text below that. From just their name, age, and physical appearance, the user then tries to figure out if they want to swipe right, meaning they want to pursue a conversation with this person, hopefully match with them, or left, which means they'll be eliminating them from their dating pool. In real life, we often judge someone based off their character. Sure, appearances are a clear first impression, but those often don't stick once we get to know them. In online dating, a user has to judge whether or not they want to pursue a person based solely on appearance. So of course we're going to swipe right on those that we find attractive. And while men and women often have different standards of beauty, all standards are formed based on what we decided at a young age was average and what was beautiful. In most people, symmetry is found to be a key player in what is found attractive. From there, however, the user makes assumptions about their character. Attractive people are often seen as friendlier and more trustworthy, making them the perfect candidate for the casual romance or flirty conversation that someone using Tinder is most likely looking for. Because of this, physique can actually determine how others perceive you and affect your dating life quite a bit. And while this may seem like grim news for some, it's not the end of the world. Studies show that someone's perception of physical appearance can be greatly altered by the perception of their character. So, if you have a genuine connection with someone and are able to foster a relationship out of that, they're likely to find you more and more attractive as that connection grows. Additionally, with the increasing popularity of these apps, there are more entering the market constantly, so there are ample amounts of opportunity for you to meet someone by using them. Before focusing on dating, however, you should always have a strong sense of self and feel comfortable in your own skin, which is why I'm going to pass it on to Daniel to expand on this topic. Friends, I can name three right off the bat. Uh, the gang's all here. Oh! All right, so after that clip, we are now in the self esteem and social behavior section of our chapter. And let's just go right off the bat that when it comes to self esteem and physique, there's really no guarantee or correlation, at least direct correlation that shows that your physical appearance, whether when you're growing up with a great physical appearance or a bad one, that you will have good, great self-esteem or positive self-esteem growing up in adolescence or in the vice versa in a negative sense. However, there are forms that were able to increase your self-esteem either in the positive direction or in the negative direction in the form of artifacts. For example, if you're a female, you're able to put cosmetics on your face to be able to make yourself more appealing to uh, males or vice versa of males if you want to put makeup on to ensure that you are more appealing to the same sex and go so on and so forth when it comes to those examples you're able to do so another example in an artifact being facial surgery to be able to change your physical appearance for better or for worse to be able to boost your self-esteem as well now the reason why we do this is because there's a stereotype out there where if you have a great physical appearance odds are you have these traits that are listed here, intelligence, social, you're very sociable, you're competent, friendly, and trustworthy. And that's the stereotype that, we're, that we have come to learn and believe in to where now if we have a great facial expression or facial appearance, you're able to have these traits right off the bat. No need to learn and adapt to gain them. That's why when individuals don't have what is deemed to be a great facial or physical appearance or physique in general, they try to do whatever they can in the form of artifacts to be able to get to these, to get to be able to get to these traits. 
Now, when it comes to antisocial behaviors and physique, similar to self-esteem, it's really hard to find a direct correlation between the two. Granted, after doing a few of the research, I found that dysfunctional children are rated to have these traits, with the main one being less attractive. However, it, it really is hard to put into effect that physical appearance is the sole reason as to why individuals get become dysfunctional or have antisocial behaviors of the sorts that you see of one of the following traits here because other events could occur at the same time. For example, if a family member passes in someone's family that they had a really good connection towards, that could also play a key factor into why they're now becoming more dysfunctional and caring less about their physical appearance. But on the flip side, it, someone's physical appearance may not be as great and might have a lot of rejections when it comes to getting into a relationship or finding that romantic partner to which that leads, leads them to be more dysfunctional or having them go into the self-esteem route when the stereotypes wanting to do what they can in the form of artifacts or any form of other behaviors to be able to boost that self-esteem and in turn get rid of their antisocial behavior. Overall, self-esteem and antisocial behaviors as it relates to physique have one thing in common, that they're both affected by societal opinions. Self-esteem is highly driven based on appearances due to the stereotypes society placed upon it, and antisocial behaviors are being created due to appearances being placed high on judgmental factors. In other words, when people care more about physical appearances over personalities, people are going to choose the personal appearances over personality first. So going off self-esteem and antisocial behaviors, I'm going to talk a little bit about stereotypes on physical appearance. A stereotype may be defined as a standardized mental picture that is held in by co common by members of a group and that represents an oversimplified opinion, prejudiced attitude, or uncritical judgment. We live in a society that is consumed with so many stereotypes on what may be attractive is to the point that almost everyone has personal insecurities. If you don't fit in with what humans see as perfect, then you may be seen as ugly or unattractive. But we may even question what is perfect. Society may clarify someone to be perfect if they have a small waist, acne-free face, small nose, luscious hair, straight teeth, and the list goes on. This also kind of ties into what I read on social cognition about the negativity bias. The negativity bias kind of goes off of how we view unattractive people differently. But even we don't have a pure definition of what unattractive is. The authors ask, does negativity bias apply to social judgments based on facial attractiveness? If so, then we may perceive unattractive faces as significantly different from both medium and high attractive faces. This is unfair because we all know that there is a sense of uniqueness to each one of each human being. But the negativity bias is saying that if someone isn't seen as perfect, then they are different. But we don't even know what perfect really is. So another big stereotype is with tattoos, which this is a big misconception. It kind of teaches you to never read a book by its cover. A person with tattoos may be seen as mean, scary, or even category categorized as a rule breaker when it is, that is not the case. People with tattoos are also known to get denied from job positions because it may be unprofessional. Expressing your, through yourself through body ink will never be seen as perfect due to these stereotypes. And I found a cute little clip from Spongebob. So here you can watch this clip now that shows the stereotypes on tattoos. Yeah, I feel pretty sorry for the next guy who looks at me funny. Mm, what about that guy? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> don't be silly. He's not bothered. So Spongebob becomes scared of the guy with tattoos because he looks scary and that he can't be tough to get into the little club that they're trying to get in. This proves that it's just like a, vi a big misconception that tattoos are bad. So another factor is what people may call pretty privilege. And pretty privilege is a big disadvantage to unattractive people, saying that if you're pretty, then you'll be more sociable because you'll be more confident and that people will give you the time of day and come and talk to you, which is pretty unfair. 
And I think a lot of stereotypes come from social media when you're looking at your Instagram feed and you see Kim Kardashian with her thousands and millions of dollars that she spent on plastic surgery. You start to see that as perfect. You start to see that as the norm in which you feel bad that you don't look that way. You have to remember that not all stereotypes are valid in that you are unique in your own way. Okay, I'm looking at the different forms of physical appearance. And when it comes to physical appearance, just think of basically anything that makes up how you look or how you express yourself to the outside world. So there's a lot of different things that can go into your physical appearance, whether it be your complexion, your height, your build, your hair, the clothes you choose to wear, and also your face or your facial expression. And I chose to focus on clothes and face for this presentation because I thought they had the most impact and told the most about yourself to the outside world. So for face, face works to give and receive feedback. So you can tell a lot about a person through their facial expressions. Um, it also helps to regulate conversation. So it gives turns to each other and that's through means of eye contact, that plays a large role in that. So when somebody is actively listening, they tend to have more eye contact. And that way you know that someone's actually listening to you and is has interest in what you're saying. Um, it also expresses emotion. So think of all the different emotions that your face can make up, whether you're mad or sad or happy. Um, and then for clothes, clothes can express a ton of different things as well such as gender, age, occupation, and personality. So for occupation, you can think of the different business attires, where, whether it's business formal or business casual, all those things. You know, you dress up for a specific outlook from others. You want them to perceive you in a certain way. And then I chose to take a look at an interesting um, study that was done, and it was done in a similar sense to how our discussion groups kind of form when we'd have those discussions in class. So it was on a bunch of college students and they were all in a circle and they were doing different debate debates. So they were debating and the researchers wanted to look at how impactful to the college students was facial expression, gesture, physical appearance, and intonation. And what they found out after doing the study was that facial expression, gesture, and physical appearance all had a really similar level of impact when it came to, to a discussion um, for the college students. So they drew a conclusion that maybe when we're viewing somebody in a discussion situation, facial expression, gesture, and physical appearance, we, we do that all at the same time. And they found that intonation, which is the tone of voice, was what was most impactful and had the most influence in the discussion setting for these college students. So uh, I personally found it interesting because I would have thought physical appearance would be the most influential out of the four, but they found that tone of voice was actually the most important. All right, so now we're going to move on to how clothing influences one's physique and therefore their perceived attraction. So first I want to talk about the power of clothing and what it tells other people about us besides just our sense of style. So clothing can reveal someone's personality, their background, social and economic status, what occupation they're in, what mood they're feeling that day, and so on and so forth. So when we wake up in the morning, we go to the closet, we decide what clothes we want to wear, what accessories we want to put on, and when we're doing this, we are actually putting together pieces of ourselves that we will then put on display for other people to see. And this influences how other people perceive us, and since everyone has their own opinions and tastes, we will be perceived differently by different people. So, how does clothing influence the way that we feel? The best way that I can describe this is my experience in this lockdown, and I'm sure a lot of other people will be able to write, relate to this as well, but on most days, I'm in my pajamas for the whole entire day. Since I'm not going outside, I don't see a point into changing into other clothes, so I'm just in my pajamas. 
However, there will be some days where I have to put on the clothes if I'm going to get groceries or if I'm going for a walk or something. But there are some days when I just put on normal clothes just to be around the house. Like I'm not going outside, I'm just staying inside, being around the house in normal clothes. And on those days, I do notice a difference in the way that I feel. When I'm just wearing my pajamas all day, I feel lazy, I don't want to put in any effort to do anything. And when I change into the other clothes, I feel more put together and it makes me want to be more productive and not just lounging on the couch all day, watching TV and just eating snacks. And this alone definitely proves to me that clothing makes a huge difference in my self-perception and the way that I feel in general. As I said before, clothing influences how we see ourselves and how we are perceived by others. So how does this relate to physique and attraction? Well, when people first meet us, they use the way that we look and the way that we're dressed to make judgments about us. Then they use these judgments to assess our attractiveness and their liking of us. In one of the studies that I was researching, they talked about people who are narcissistic are often pe uh, perceived as being attractive and more popular uh, when they are first being met with someone at like their first impression. So in the study, they talked about how narcissists put a lot of effort into the way that they look because they think so highly of themselves. And this translates into the way that other people see them. So without meeting them at the first impression, people see that they're fancy clothes or their trendy clothes and like more expensive clothing. Their hair might be nicely done. Their makeup might be nicely done. And they perceive that person as being more attractive and popular just solely based on the way that they look. And so because of this, it's another example that has proved to me that clothing has a lot of power over the way other people see us and make judgments about us just based on the way that we look and how we are dressed. I've been through a lot in the past six days, five minutes, 27 and a half seconds. And if I've learned anything during that time, it's that you are who you are. <laughs>